We used to believe our destiny was in the stars. Now we know in large measure our fate is in our genes. <laughs> this claim is not true. Since the individual genome is determined at fertilization and the sequence is set at that moment, the McCabe's argue that a person's fate would then be immutable, but that is not the case. They explain the sequence as written is not as important as how it is read. That's by the body. Yeah. Environmental influences affect changes in the DNA to silence certain genes which will not be read. They may remain silenced for the life of the individual and possibly beyond in the future generations. Professors and scientists of human genetics have emphasized that our knowledge of human genes and their actions is slight, that we cannot bring about correct human breeding. They believe many of us are under the misunderstanding created by the gene myth, the view that our nature, and even our fate, is in the genes. The gene that genes determine behavior like a puppeteer his puppets. Mm -hmm. Some of the American public is taken in by the claims of the new so-called scientists. They are not apprised of the truth of genetic discrimination, determinism, and economic considerations. There is a plethora of ideas such as procreative beneficence, having the best child you can by assistive reproductive technologies, ARTS, and prenatal genetic diagnosis, which sometimes is uh, generally used to produce savior babies who are genetically manipulated to provide <coughs> matching stem cells for a brother or a sister carrying a defective gene. There is currently a market for organs and tissues, commercialization of genetic te testing, and commerce and reproductive technologies. I have barely skinned the surface of the problems raised by the infant technology of genetic manipulation. I embrace science, and I do not believe all the above practices are wrong. I am simply advocating caution in the face of enthusiasm about genetic manipulation, particularly since most Americans do not have a proper grasp of the subject. Here are the McCabe's general prescriptions to ensure against the resurgence of eugenics. They maintain, one, we must recognize the illegitimacy of genetic discrimination and support genetic non-discrimination legislation. Two, respect personal autonomy and reproductive freedom. Three, recognize and resist the corrosive nature of commodification of body parts, including genes and gametes on social structure. Four, guard against policies from organized medicine, governments, and corporations that could enshrine eugenic practices. And five, educate opinion leaders and populists regarding the risks of overpromising genetics, genomics, and the consequences of determinism and eugenics. I would like to ask members of our secular community to remain true to our humanist roots, which came to us through the 18th century enlightenment, through our American founders, and through men like Robert Greene Ingersoll and Carl Sagan. I would like to urge all of us to follow humanist morality and ethics. We need to insist that those who promise to provide humanity a brilliant flourishing through biological manipulation of genes and other methods must provide salient proof for their expectations and promises. If they do not offer us scientific evidence, we have the right to refuse to accept their speculations. That is the way to avoid what happened when Americans listened to the Pied Pipers of eugenics in the past. We may not have godlike foresight, but we are able to listen to critics, debate legal proposals, and to adopt a cautious approach when we are urged to endorse so-called scientific approaches to social and moral problems. Science will not explain all of our human past, nor provide for all human flourishing in the future. Let us adopt caution and think of human dignity. We are secular humanists, and many of us are skeptics. Let us cling to those life stances, and they will see us safely through an impressive future riddled with breathtaking expectancy and uncertainty on all sides. It is exigent that we make that future safe for our children, for our beliefs, and for future generations. Thank you for your attention. I'm looking forward to our discussion. Yay. Yay. <laughs> very, very well done. Good. Well, that's just rich stuff there. Yeah, that is pretty rich for exploration. I am so sick and tired of hearing a small amount of atheists, but nevertheless, say that they're for eugenics. You know, and so that's going to solve the problems in the human race. And they don't understand the ramifications and viciousness well, of They this. think they're superior. They think, yeah, that's mm -hmm, part of the mm -hmm. problem. Though. That, yeah. that they're above the rest, so mm -hmm. why not? It's, it seems like almost mathematically intriguing. And to say this whole concept of dilution or average to, to the average guy and you cut out all the bad yeah. then the average guy would be so it, 
if you're you have to suspend your humanity to do yeah. that. Mm. Yeah. And and so if you're you're just gonna be Vulcan about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well I mean, you know, all these a lot of these things are non inherited. You know, pauperism is not inherent. Criminals I mean criminals have perfectly, you know, normal kids that lead normal yeah. lives. Yeah. And do well many times. That did bring up the question when I mean of course they said criminality was Hereditary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Promiscuity was. Pro yep. Prostitution. And prostitution. Right. Which, I mean, the world would be no fun at all. But, <laughs> but uh, what is inheritable then? I mean, what, it, 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 does science have any basis for anything that should be? You mean as a personality trait, trait or as a biological mm -hmm. illness or something? Well, I think it's dangerous. I mean, a lot of people that have physical defects don't have children that have defects. But, but in relation to the lecture, I think what you're asking is about behavior. What, what's inherited about your behavior, your personality, yeah. or your tendencies. And, and this much. is still being claimed, like Steven Pinker and others are still claiming that behavior and personality are inherited. So you, they're going to fight you on some They respect. can fight all they want, but they're going out of style very fast, the yeah, evolutionary well, psychologists. Because first of all, there's, they said that we don't have time enough. Yeah. There hasn't been time for people to evolve. They found out that evolution is taking place much quicker. Well, I mean, just so between they're wrong. parents and child, they, they try to put a percentage on it that, it, that if your, your parents are, say, type A personality, you have a higher percentage chance of being the type A personality. Because you're living with them. But you're living with them, yeah. It's nurture, not nature. Uh -huh. nurture. I, Both nurture and nature, I think. What I'm about to say has absolutely in no way should be taken as an agreement that this is good. <laughs> okay. But I'm adopted. Okay. Okay. When I met my birth father, okay, it was like, not physically, but personality-wise, like looking in a mirror. It was scary and everybody including my birth mother she she just looked at me after meeting me for only a couple times and she and I some of the things I did she goes oh my god you're your father <laughs> okay I didn't wasn't raised with my father I met the man when I was in my 30s there was no influence whatsoever so how do you explain that Lisa? I'm not well all I'm saying is that I think it's for, but you see, this is one case. You'd have to take... Well, but friends, they have cases of twins. Yeah. They have all sorts of... Yeah, but of those cases of twins are not... Holding and did you just hear me say I did yeah. not... Okay. Did okay, not but I just want to say, I wanna to say, say something say. about the twins. But I think we would also... The twins do not hold up. The studies, they're, they're, they're false. But they, what I'm saying is I think it would be naive for us to say, and just because science hasn't proven it yet, or disproven it, I think it would be stupid for us to say, you can inherit blue eyes... But you absolutely, under no circumstances, can inherit, inherit a personality trait, but we, such as a proclivity to anger. But we don't know that yet. I just said, science hasn't saying, proven. No, I'm not yeah. saying I support okay. the argument, but okay. it's almost like you're saying it's absolutely impossible. And I'm saying, no. I'm no. Not. I, I would like us to adopt, as I said, a lot of caution. I'm, I'm oh, for a lot yeah. of these yeah. things. I mean, I think some of and these no things... And no child should, no person should be prejudged by their parents' personality yeah, and absolutely. assumed that they would take yeah. on those traits yeah. by any stretch of the imagination. Because but to deny don't. that personality could not be in some way, shape, or form tied to heredity, I think would be short-sighted. Well, okay. it, it would be, it okay. would be. But you see, I'm arguing nature and nurture. Yeah, but, well, obviously, and obviously yeah. I'm not my father, but oh yeah. my God. And, and I just helpful. don't like the people that take either, either stand. I just don't think it's correct. But I'm also, you're right. And an environment. An you, environment. Had made the, and I, you had made the argument, I was actually, you brought this up early, I was waiting until we got into it, because I know I'm about to get in deep shit for this. <laughs> so you had, oh yeah, I am. So you had brought up the thing about, and I agree, I mean, eugenic, stupid, bad, dumb, um, about... You know, we can't say hereditary and let's just sterilize. Just because your parent's an idiot doesn't mean yeah. you could birth up the next Einstein, yeah. even though you're a moron yourself. Yeah. Sure, I get that. But it almost, when you were saying that environment has a huge influence, you almost made the reverse argument about, because I've always said this, never would I agree with eugenics, but I look at people who are poor and in poverty and who cannot provide their children with any, and of course... There are a bajillion statistics out there. If you're born into poverty, it's harder to get out of poverty. Sure. You have higher statistics of 
crime and all this sure. stuff. Absolutely not related to some genetic thing, but that was almost an argument for sterilizing poor people and like that because not that I'm saying I would, but it's like but it so to like, remove that environment to say you cannot bring children into this environment because clearly that environment, not you, not heredity, is a cause which can be scientifically demonstrated statistically well, I, for I, these I, issues. But is it, Jim, yeah. what do you think? Not, not that right. I'm advocating. I'm just saying yeah. you could almost. The you could take your Jim argument. Worked, Jim worked in poor environments. I'm not saying I yes. would make that argument. Very I'm foolish. saying you, you for your own good. Look, it affects use. environment. Affects right. your IQ. Environment affects your IQ. Right. Environment affects every every phase. So if you cannot bring your child into an environment that does that, if you're going to bring your kid into an environment that does all those negatively. Yeah. Then that's almost making the argument that forget the eugenics, let's just go with environment. Do, and say I, you do be I have the right to determine that? I'm not saying it. Who not has the right? I just, I that's just not the you. argument. I'm, I'm only making. asking. Who's that's not the about? argument. Who's I'm just good? saying the way that you, you kept phrasing yeah. environment is your justification for why nature well, is not, not all, the answer. It's not all environment. I was it's like, there's almost more science to show that environment is a, is a rationale for not letting. I'm not it's saying I make that argument. Yeah. I'm saying that someone could. Yeah. Well, so I mean, Sam, Sam, Sam Harris would make that argument. Yeah. Define yeah. correlation, but Sam not. Harris, yeah. based on oh, science. Oh, Sam Har Harris might, but you know he's not serious. Would say we're gonna we're gonna take care of this scientifically. Well, they keep many, saying many that. They keep saying we'll take care of morals scientifically. We'll raise the human race up scientifically. They never say how. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like it's like the communists yeah. where everything's well, gonna you know, be great to somewhere a lot mm -hmm. somewhere in yeah. the future, it's gonna be wonderful. Yeah. These guys that are what do they call them? Scientisms or what do they call them? Um, yeah, scientism. Yeah, scientism. It's it's a belief in science which that, I think that goes science too far. can set public And believe policy. me, I'm I'm a real advocate of science. But, but but there is a strong I think that's what what you're getting at is there's a strong statistical correlation that doesn't mean causation. Yeah. So if you're going to look at exactly. correlation, you're going to say, well, yeah, what poor people. Mm -hmm. But what is poor people? But what yeah, if well, it was people, caused? The, caused yeah, it doesn't say, I mean, you can't say that it is or it isn't. It? But what if now, the people I have read uh, that I'm reading right now uh, for my project, uh, <laughs> they all, the earlier writers even, uh, in the 30s and 40s, came to this conclusion and they came, come right up against it. How can you break the mold, and you have to have, they come back to, you have to have a much more just society. Mm -hmm. You have to face the fact that you must distribute the wealth. The wealth is concentrated all in, basically, in the uh, top 10%. 10%. 1%, uh, no. Now, now it's the 1%. And 1% of that 1% has the sway mm -hmm. of all the things. Money is just impossible to imagine the wealth that they have. Um, and um, what's happened is that there's no money down in the for the lower classes. There's absolutely no the, the education is deprived. Walk into the school sometimes in in the inner city. Walk into the, the tear around, get in your car, and walk right into a school in Birmingham, Bloomfield Hills, and you will see such a difference you'll faint. Try it. Experiment with that. Um, I've seen it firsthand. I agree. And, and they just don't have the, the means. They don't have the funds. And, and, and then you've also got the, the question of drug abuse. I mean, if you're poor, you're living in hell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where do you find joy? You find some artificial mm -hmm. yeah. joy. And it's interesting that and they it, aren't the only ones taking drugs. No. The yeah. majority of, of drugs. They're just the only ones The majority of drugs it. in this country are pers consumed by the upper middle classes. The people who have we can afford it. We're, we're off who, topic now. Who yeah, we are can afford it. We're right on I just, topic. All I was doing we're was right on topic point point because this has to be There's actually more the, rationale the, for some crazy argument using the environment about. than yeah. there is hereditary. That's a trouble. <laughs> and, and not that yeah. I would do it. I mean, I'm my, I always wonder why people, I don't understand why anybody who's poor has children in the first place by choice. <laughs> Well, people do. That's the weird thing. Yeah. But did the rise of birth control and then abortion, did that really take care of this argument? No. Yeah. When people said, oh, they're, they're breeding like rabbits, we have to stop them yeah. from, from breeding. Because if you could if you could get an abortion almost uh, affordably, then 
we don't have to forcibly sterilize you. In this country, the uh, the uh, richer upper classes, many of them pr at least purport to be against abortion. Well, but but nevertheless, it's legal. I don't know legal. what they think would happen. I have a hunch that they probably aren't really. You know, it's legal. Uh, birth control is legal. There was another program, maybe Jim, you're going to mention that uh, was reported was accused of racism was that they were going to put implants into black women's arms. This was another birth oh, control. Oh, method. no, I, I know. I do remember that. They did. Yes, when, the, um, when the whatchamacallit came I out. I do remember that. Um, it was like a... The pill. No, not the pill. The, much later. Uh, the there's an oh, implant. It no, it's that. not That's an IUD. Right. There's a, there's, yeah, it's a slow <laughs> release. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they were targeting uh, supposedly black women, young black women, yeah. to get this implant because they weren't relying on... They weren't using birth control. They thought, oh, this will be easy. They don't have to take a pill. But th but then it got so much criticism, and I think there was also some bad effects to it that it yeah. Oh, it's it's, it's hormonally. Yeah. Yeah. It can be Caught devastating. Out. I mean, it can be wreck havoc. You know, we the, spoke the, to uh, uh, somebody like a who is a, a well-known atheist, so I won't use any names. Do you remember, Jim? That had just let me know what you're going to say, and I'll agree worked, with you. <laughs> that had worked in the Detroit system for a while. Yeah. Remember we were at dinner? Yeah, go ahead. You remember? And you you clashed clashed uh, theories with her? Well, per, with this person? <clears throat> oh, yes. I know now. I know okay. what you're talking Would about. Would you like to elaborate on that a little bit without using names? Well, yes, if I can remember everything. You filled in if I, I'm missing okay. some things. Uh, the person in, in question was a is a well-known scholar. Very well-known. And uh, she had drawn some conclusions from her uh, work and uh, research in the Detroit system. And uh, she was making some rather racial imp implication statements. Would you fill in on some of those? Well, I can't remember what she said. Actually, didn't some of those hit the news? <coughs> no. Personally? No. But she was trying to use science as a, as yes. a cover for this. Yes. Yeah. For racism. For mm -hmm. really what was a racist idea, but yeah. they can say no, this is science. It became she became quite angry. Not I mean not you know wanting to hit or anything, so, but she was like put out by Jim Connor. So there are crazy yeah. people out there. But see that argument falls apart because the minute you say it's because they're black in Detroit and that's the problem, you're completely forgetting all the poor white people in Appalachia who are just as screwed up, yeah. stupid, and you're, you're, and everything you're also else. forgetting about their so white the race, classmates. Not right. everybody who goes to school in Detroit. Yeah, I mean that, that argument falls so apart so fast. Yeah, so yeah. fast. But can I throw this this concept out here? So we had affluent people saying you supporting eugenics and saying it's the survival of the fittest thing, and and that maybe sterilizing those that aren't the high achievers, et cetera. Great. Yeah. And so doesn't the simple math kind of say because the rich are. Only, they're only standing above the general populace because they're standing on their backs. You got I mean, it. You, you can't get rid of the poor people and still be rich. Who's going to wash your car? <laughs> Who's going to do all that work? Yeah. Who's going to grow your food? So, to get rid of them, it's just, if everybody's rich and nobody's poor, then nobody's rich. Which is why I can't understand why we hate immigrants so much. Well, no, yeah, but, but the idea, if they're not here to speak for themselves, but I'll try, is that there's going to be too many. They're going to explode. That yeah, is, that yeah. it's going to be the, the breeding of... of Dozens and dozens of children. So it's an infestation. We're, we're not going to be able for it. Excuse me, but the Christian white right right is doing a great job of that right now, all on their own, having you know huge families yeah. to secure Christianity by yeah. infiltrating everything. Yeah. That's a, that's a freaking. Oh yeah, I know the quiver full. Yes. Oh. Yeah. I, that's I'm not making that's, that up. That is a no, strategy. No, you're Christian not making church. that up. I, yeah, I understand. Well, and the Jews, the Orthodox Jews, have a similar. Strategy, but I'm just I'm just speaking for this fantasy that they they were breeding and breeding and that would just wipe out these upper class people that either physically they'd be threatened or they would be uh, you know burdened by having to take care of them from a, if you're a socialist you, you'd be burdened by taking mm -hmm. care of them and if you're mm -hmm. a capitalist you would be threatened with mm -hmm. you know, st stealing of your property. And I'm wondering, was this kind of an answer to communism? Because communism was also on the rise there in the beginning of the 20th century. So was, was some of this like, okay, here's an 
alternative to the communists. Well, remember, there were communists and socialists and anarchists, so this but these was all people, happening at the same time. Well, I know that, but these people were not communists, no. right? Mm -hmm. So the communists would, would have answered what Jim said. Uh -huh. He said, oh, well, we're just going to redistribute mm -hmm. to all of these proletariats, mm -hmm. all these masses, and that'll take care of the problem, mm -hmm. right? This that's, is a, that's, that's, but that's what they're saying. Yeah. yeah. So, but this would be, if I didn't like that idea, I could have this counter idea of eugenics that said, yes. no, I'll, I'm going to take well, care of the problem. No, we're not going to redistribute our wealth. We're just going to get rid of them all. We're going to have to get rid of them instead of redistributing. Mm -hmm. So in some ways it's a backlash. Because you have to ask yourself, well, why in the 19th century, early 20th century, did this happen? Why didn't it happen in the 17th century? What, what mm -hmm. was so mm -hmm. different about the, the 19th century that it, that, was there any kind of classical eugenics Prior to the 19th century, anybody saying this? I think yeah, you know, there probably was, but it was more in the sense of, you know, people like in Greece, they got rid of disabled children. Mm -hmm. it, the, they they would just kill Greece. you anyway. Yeah. They, they left them out to the you know, exposure. Mm -hmm. right. The Arabs do that. It's, it's quite common yeah. practice in the uh, Arab culture. Yeah. Uh, I don't think in this country uh, to eliminate females if you want to. And the the. State well, also. It's accepted. Asian. Asian. Yeah. <coughs> it's accepted and, in the culture. And but from their point of view, I mean, this this new person was going to cost them something yep. to raise to adulthood. So yep. so the simple equation is 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 what is to be gained by letting them live to adulthood. They have inheritance laws too. So it was, a, yeah. it was yeah. economic, mm -hmm. an economic question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is a, a form and of eugenics which, as well. Which yeah. I, I kind of felt when you were talking about the church. Well, well, first of all, let me throw a slogan out there for you, Genesis. White lives matter. <laughs> More. <laughs> More is More. right. More. But when you talk about the church and eugenics, and, and you know, I, I, I just heard the Pope was out there. Oh, God. And, you know, he's apparently taken this pseudo vow of poverty. And so he was, whatever country he was in, he was saying he thinks it's wrong that the bishops are living in the best houses and driving the best cars, that the shepherds should smell like the sheep. <laughs> now, if you said that to like a union shop, cut your wages, you know. <laughs> it, it, it seemed to me it was an economic thing, like, I'd like to pay you guys less, yeah. send me more of what you get, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I'm taking a vow of poverty. Yeah. If you don't, you're not really a truly holy mm -hmm. man, and, and all that kind of stuff. The but, church has always done that. But when you look at the church, treats of people the, fronting the, this stuff, and while they, you know, overbreed, and that is overbreeding, you know. But when you look at the economic impact on the church of eugenics, wouldn't it be nice if the basket didn't pass the <laughs> unfit? Because they attend a theatrical performance without buying a ticket. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's just when I think. Of, we want rich people in our seats, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Don't we all? And and then when we and also this whole concept of, of uh, the pure Anglo-Saxon. I just exactly. how do you? Yeah. Was Jesus white? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I can live there. Um, I have a question. So I'm looking. They wouldn't have allowed him through my church. notes about what I wrote. No, they wouldn't have. I had a couple of questions. So Spencer. Yeah. Um, the philosopher who was what very responsible for promoting this idea. He yeah. said he was a Nobel Prize nominee, and I looked yeah. it up online. It was for literature. Was it for his sociology books? Or? I think it was for his sociology books. Yes. Okay. I don't think he wrote literature, if I'm not mistaken. Well, yeah, that was what he was nominated for, so that's why I was wondering well, because even what it said was sociological, sociological literature. <laughs> okay, so it wasn't great literature it was well i mean no i mean usually it wasn't fiction. Was nominated right. for literature is considered the like sense. at the top of the you know okay um i just thought that was odd and then you had mentioned i thought you said you were talking awful fast some of the time i'm sorry that's okay because i'm no, like no, you were on to the next thing before i could jot down my notes it was so long i didn't um, want to drive everybody nuts so you said there was, you mentioned two books, and I, and I can't remember which one you said was like a seminal good one to read on social Hofstadter. Darwin. Hofstadter. Huh? Hofstadter. So Hofstadter was the, yeah. and it was yeah. seminal in, in yeah. arguing against it. Well, Correct? he has all the criticisms of it. He was, this okay. is a historical kind of, wait a minute, you know, let's see if I have any of the bib. I don't know, I don't know if I have the full bib here. Um, let me see here. 
Social Darwinism in American Thought, Boston Beacon Press, 1944. Um, okay. So he was basically writing a, um, just a histor historical criticism. Right, okay. right. But it's seminal still. I mean, it's quite remarkable. Right. And Paul Lombardo, and this is funny, he's the guy that uh, sponsored that thing where the number where the students had that, that, remember they had, they, replicated a prison program. Oh, yeah. Remember? Yeah, he's the guy. He's What's his name? Paul, Paul Lombardo. Lombardo. Lombardo, yeah. yeah. So I was quite amazed that he wrote such a good book on, on genetics because he was such a bad guy. <laughs> and then, but what was but the that's book? that's a century of genetics in America, and that's a collection of, of essays. But his essays, the essays in there are really excellent. Then what was the William Graham Sumner book? Oh, wait, you don't want to read that full I, I don't. I yeah. just was trying to understand <laughs> the difference. Yeah. It, I kept finding it all over. His was, like, which one was it? it? I only know about it. Which one was it? Folkways. Folkways. Folkways, yeah. It was, it was I'm telling you, I can't tell you how many copies. That's the one you kept saying you come across. people's libraries. It was so funny. So obviously it was a book maybe not always read. But it was a book that people felt that they should, you know, have on their shelves. But it was a bad... I'll read someday. <laughs> it was a bad... Yeah. Okay. Well, from our... Right. From our point I mean, of view, promoted yeah. eugenics. Okay. Yeah, so I, I would say he was much I worse than Spencer. I think Spencer was somewhere. more... Spencer, I think, was more intellectual and nuanced. And Sumner was more Sumner populist. Was like a, yeah, proletarian, okay. yeah. So that was... Okay, so I was trying to clarify those two books. And then... Uh, Christine Rosen wrote, uh, this is a really good one on the, the religious. Um, Let's see who is she. Um, preaching genetics, religious leaders in the American eugenics movement. And then the Jukes family, which wasn't really their name. Oh my God, that's, um, I, I that don't was know if the, you even want to read that. No, I, I was just looking it up online, but... Um, they taught us that in school in the same way. I mean, I can't believe it in college. As if it was real. That's what yeah. I was going to ask you when yeah. you were talking to him, so yeah. when you were saying that. And this was like at the end of the 50s. They were actually teaching it as They were as still a, teaching it as though it were factual, this this idea of, you know, that they, you know, the, the, this showed, you know, the, you know, the bad heredity. It's incredible to me. And that's terrible. Yeah. And well, that was part of what influenced us. one on that, that scientific study of that family and the Calic, whatever, the, the guy who had children with both a Quaker wife and the crappy wife, Calica, Cal, no. oh, Christ. Cal, uh, it's, that wasn't his real name. He had a Quaker wife and he had a prostitute wife. And they did a study on the children of the Quaker That's wife interesting. and the children of his, I don't know, or his prostitute, prostitute mistress or something. And the Quaker kids were better. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they did this whole, and they have, it was Cala, it starts with a K, and Calica. No, I'm not like familiar that. with that study. But uh, well, if you lie. look up Jukes, you'll see that one mentioned with simultaneously it? Okay. with it. As, they didn't as teach us that one. one. Um, that no, just no happened to pop up when something. I was looking up Jukes. But those were the ones that influenced Holmes. That was the science, and that was the studies that influenced Well, the Holmes Jukes, was... I think Dugdale wrote that. Didn't he? Yeah, yeah. The Jukes thing was very influential. Okay. As it you is. can see, they surprised. were still teaching it to us in the late 50s. That was a shocker to me. That Even Wendell though Holmes that there was, was a better book. That but was amazing. Norm, you wanted to say something. Well, I have a question for you. I mean, are you claiming that the evolutionary psychologists are neo-social Darwinists? Yeah, that was a lot yeah, of Yeah, I, I feel almost that they are. I know I'm being unfair. I, I, no, I don't I, know. I, mean, I hold Stephen defend. Pinker a little separate from them because I think he's more sensible. But, yeah, I, I think that they're frauds, to tell you the truth. Because, you know, they would claim that, that they're not how are they? How are they conducting their, their research Co among college students? They're, they're taking, yeah. they're ta and they're, you know, those forced answer things, you know, where, you know, you have to answer like, I feel jealous when. What does this mean? How do we know what those people were like in the damn yeah. Stone Age? But are they are they're not proscriptive in the way that they're not saying we have to do this, we have to have this social policy. <clears throat> no, no, but and, I think it could so grow I, into that. I don't I think really it's do. fair to, to really call them social Darwinists. Well, I didn't really call but, them that. I just threw them in. <laughs> but it is interesting <laughs> because you know their their immediate predecessor was E. O. Wilson's social biologist. Yeah, I know, but Wilson is term, a lot more respectable scientist than they are. 
but but you mentioned that that was the term used in the 70s was social biology. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm not real crazy about Wilson's social biology, but I do accept it to some extent. Now explain but the social, but you mentioned that word in a row Norm my can, normal explain, explain social it. biology. Well, please. it's modeled it's off better. of studying insects uh, that are Oh, are like ants and, and, okay, ants okay. and bees. Okay, yeah, he's really and so okay. Okay. Wilson, he's an atheist. Wilson did that, and then he was attacked, and he felt that it was very unfair, but he was attacked as a eugenicist, as someone who was saying, because ants... They, they kill the weak of their colony, he was attacked as if he was implying that that was a good thing for humans <laughs> to do. So some of his lectures were actually, people would throw pies at him and would protest, and they would do like, it was very reactionary. They'd call him a racist and everything like they that. They still do with his latest theories. Apparently somebody poured water over him at, at a recent lecture a few years ago. I believe. Go ahead. Um... I think we brought this up at another one, and I want to see if I'm connecting these correctly. Remember the book club book that we that we went to? I had to look mm -hmm. it up real quick. Um, Tinker. The, no, the skeptics. They, there was a book on um, Rachman, whatever the hell, Ra Ramachandran. Yeah. His oh yeah. Okay. So, and one of the things that I had a problem with is I started reading the book. I mean, he had some stuff that made great sense in yes. the turn like his um his his mirror experiments yeah. with the amputee. I mean, there was some. But then he started. A lot of what he did in the book that started to really turn me off is was heavy speculation into um, evolution and how we work psychologically. Now again, I, I think it would be foolish to say that evolution wouldn't play a role. I think just like I would say it's foolish to say that gen your parents' personality traits might not pass, you know, to just discard that. However, I mean it was like every single thing he tried to make these connections to an evolutionary thing and sometimes I felt it was extremely forced and then I read another one to follow up on him because I was so turned off by some of his stuff um, which was that other skeptics guide to the mind what neuroscience can and can't tell us oh, and wonderful. that person took a... Did, did you like that book? Did you read it? I have it. I, I've read it. I did it? like it and he took a more skeptical... Who's is it? Robert Who's Burton. Oh, okay. You know, there's a really good, it's really hard to understand, but Colin McGinn. Yeah, I'm is, not into reading people that make me hard to right. He's better, really good, yeah, though, because finish, he's though. saying that we're at the infancy yeah. of what we, he's a neuroscientist and a philosopher. Well, and this he's guy, an atheist. this guy tried not yeah. to jump on the bandwagon yeah. of tying everything. He said, you know, we need to be way more skeptical. Exactly. That there's, and, and I think that exactly. goes to your point of saying there may be some. We don't need to jump on the bandwagon. Obviously, evolutionary science. We have proof. Yeah. Because it's, and some of the studies are stupid. That we are really at the infancy of understanding the human yes. mind. I mean, everybody talks like, oh man, we just like made these great breakthroughs and we know this and we know that. And I get a lot and of we don't you know, know science, anything. you know, um, things on, on my pages and stuff and my feed. Yeah. And, you know, Read it, Norm. a lot of them are. Skip, skeptics. You said you yeah, had it. I skeptics have it. I, to the I have to find it. It wasn't really that and hard of a read. Maybe read some. I mean, Ben Carson is in her. Shit. Yeah, so maybe yeah, he, he, he operates on brains. Oh my God! But man. the the downside oh of God, he's crazy. Uh, of the and neuroscience is that the the people who already have their pet theories, you know, like the evolutionary psychologists uh -huh. and, and whatnot, they're they're latching and the psychologists, psychiatrists, they're latching onto one finding of neuroscience, and they're saying, "You see, I told you so." Well, and they're also <laughs> doing what she said. I think having some dubious. Um, experiments that they're putting way too much weight and, and Burton actually I think if I remember correctly Burton. focused more on you know he, he tried to debunk some of that yeah. and say you know maybe but let's not get carried away yeah I mean maybe whereas Ramachandran thing. was like oh my god the sky's the limit and everything is positive you know well, they're it's excited. all about we're it. excited because they're at the beginning but yeah. you know yeah, a lot right, of yeah. things are not going to but by science way, should be skeptics by nature. There was a thing from Skeptical Inquirer that I, you know, got in my feed the other day. I, I subscribed to it, so I'm waiting for my issue. <laughs> and But it, they were talking about the fact of the American Psychological Association, how much they had cooperated with the Bush administration in, you know, um, oh, the, with the, yeah, yeah. The, the tortures and what have you. And so that people had actually dropped out, given up their membership, and they were furious. And also... They're coming to the conclusions now that a whole bunch of those experiments, they really can't be replicated, and they've been incorrect. So a lot of things they've been saying about humans 
and the human brain and the human psyche are just not it's correct. Yes. <laughs> it was an amazing amount of bullshit. <laughs> and it's sad. It's really sad when you think that, you know, people need to go to these assholes, pardon my language, but, you know, when they're hitting a rough patch. And they speak lives. with authority like it's fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. It and, ain't. That, and, and Ramachandra was doing some of that. I mean, the he way he was, was talking, you know, I haven't wanna, read that book. And so. I, I didn't. Well, I liked reading the other one as a counterweight because I started getting very uncomfortable. But to me, if your lecture, Jim, is about to go in the direction of how, you know, this new fad of evolutionary psychology is maybe going a little bit toward the, based on stuff I've read, I would think that's rather accurate. It's He's doing a, more like genetics. And yeah, more than genetics. Yeah. Okay. Are you going to go into William Shockley? Who? William Shockley was a famous eugenicist. He started the, the Nobel Prize Sperm Bank. No. Oh, that's funny. You're right, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Don't yeah. eat so you can I'm get sure a really I will smart. say something yeah. about him. Because, yeah, Shockley was a late uh, appearance of eu a eugenicist in the late 70s. It started the Nobel Prize Spermic. He was a Nobel remember. Prize winner for I don't remember that. Oh, I see. So you were supposed to, they were con supposed to contribute? Yeah, as far as I know, it actually exists. And some of the kids were brilliant, and some of them were. But see, this is the thing: well, no, no. you can put two no, no. parents with really uh, high IQs, and still have and they'll get a lot of kids like with about normal IQs. He, he's yeah. certainly in a position to have studied that, or in his studies, come across it in his studies. Uh, it just doesn't hold. There's no money and in that statement. People though. who have just right. reputable. <laughs> repu uh, uh, a good a reputation in their field as he has, uh, have discovered over the years that this is old stuff. This is old. This is not 1970s. This is the turn of the century stuff. It with twins and so forth and so on. It doesn't hold at all. None of those studies hold. No. But you know, if you're a Nobel Prize winner, you want to believe that there's something innate inherited. inside yeah, innate. of you, yeah. innate. Innate. innate, maybe inherited. Yeah. Or something that you can continue somehow yeah. because you were gifted and you can pass this on. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I think that's. But let's we, face it, the whole thing, thing about to be a Nobel Prize scientist and or to be a world class athlete or to be you are a genetic anomaly, oh. plain and simple. Yeah. And and you can't. It that's a no. once in a whatever yeah. genetic oh, the statistically sperm. right. Yeah. Even the if you were to match it. them all up all over and over yeah. again, statistically speaking. It, you're still not, you're, you're going to get a genetic anomaly. It's an anomaly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we would have a good, all of us would be that smart. Them. Yeah, I mean, very it's very cool. I yeah. mean, you know, yeah, so you, you know, so it would even be uh, outstanding. It's probably a mutation of some sort. Well, also, too, but, I mean, it's also sometimes, oh, you know, you have the credit. talent and then you have the hard work with it, too, and the ambition. Yeah, there are, are many hard. studies. And nobody ever talks there about There are many the longevity side. studies that are in, in the record they, books, longevity studies in the record books that show. People, have, they have tr done, um, taken a family that has an outstanding uh, cellist, uh, the wife is a mathematician, uh, the children were uh, in that, grew up in that environment, and some of them uh, did pick that up, but it's the, also the environments there. Absolutely. And the equipment, the beginning equipment, may be there in the genes to do it. You have that, it's in there, and it has to be, it has to be, if you were born to a different family, it Cultivate. wouldn't happen. Yeah. Has if you were born to this family, it happened. But not all the children yeah. Yeah. did that. Well, and to, but even, you even have to say, nobody ever, I, one of the things I find fascinating when they want to highlight, you know, all these brilliant people and all these, is that, how many of them were horrible parents? How many of them were social outcasts? Oh, yeah. How many downsides to their personality? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the price. And so you might have a, a, a bunch of musically inclined individuals, but if you have a father and a mother who are self self absorbed into their own career and don't create a family environment, yeah. I mean, the Osmonds, the Osmonds and, and Jackson Five created yeah. a family environment yeah. where music was part of everything they did as a family. Well, it was horrible yeah. too. I mean, you know. Well, I don't know about the Osmonds. I know the, the Jackson family Five. of the of the J.S. Box. So it's not a big surprise. J.S. Box. J.S. Box family, family in the 16th, 1600s, 1500s. Uh, yes, a very famous musical family, and um, 
Oh, about the third gen second generation. Nothing. Dissipated, you know. Yeah, there were still some musicians around from the box, and but it dissipated. But was it they went into other things? The family, and so did the fa the family moved on the Von Trapp family, but they still have. They still have Von Trapp. Yeah, they still have Von Trapp. Yeah, they're still in the terrible like family thing. They came back to it. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And they're yeah. okay. Yeah. The Partridge family. But I, yeah. but I'm just saying, I think a lot of it has to do with the environment yeah. that the family sets up. Yes. yes. That Thank nurtures you. what Thank you were saying all Thank of you. that, not just the genetics. If you were a social engineer, though, you wouldn't care that they were bad parents. You want the benefit, the greater mm -hmm. benefits mm -hmm. of their Nobel Prize or their music. Of course, I care if they're bad parents. But but you see, from that perspective of eugenesis, it didn't matter whether they were good people or not. What mattered is their contribution to this greater mm -hmm. yeah, but society. If you're going to breed for the purpose of creating the same, you know, brilliant children, unless those brilliant children have nurturing parents to nurture the brilliance. You can get as imbecilic as the next thing. I mean, you cannot separate the two. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that, that, that's that? also kind of a question mark as far as whether bad childhoods lead to uh, non-productive adults. Oh, and, and that's not necessarily true, true either. So, of course no, not. that's not, not true. necessarily no, true. No, you can overcome or you can succumb. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. One or the other. I mean, yeah. I'll, I'm, I'm just... Sometimes I, it's a seed in spite. I just because certainly would not go running it. out and being, I wouldn't go out and say, give me your awesome sperm so I can be a shitty mother <laughs> and think that my kids are going to grow up and be awesome without any input from me because I got great sperm. Now you'd be mad at the kid if they don't perform. <laughs> would you ever? But listen, I, did, I know I'm, I may be connecting to spirit points, but it really is going to go somewhere. I, I, I know there was a study I read some time ago that they were studying some monkey troop and they said there were these depressed monkeys on the outside edge of the troop and they didn't really? produce anything. And they said, why don't we just get rid of those and watch how the group thrives? And they did that, came back a year later, and every single monkey was dead. No. Because they did make a contribution. So when you say, who makes the contribution? Well, they were always on the outskirts of the troop. They were an early warning system. Oh when my predators God. came, and so let's give a guy who's a, a one in a billion example, and that would be Stephen Hawking. Mm -hmm. Now, eugenicists, maybe around here, they just snipped him because it's pretty hard to kill someone, but he probably would have been snuffed out in other countries where culturally that was acceptable to just get rid of all the weak ones. And, and the question well, is... Well, he wasn't weak until he was but, an adult, yeah, he, It was a, it was a but, disease right, but, that he got later. Yeah. How much of what he contributed was due to the fact that he was trapped in his mind and able to do these... Other things, to be distracted thought, by the rest of doing everything or? else we do, he was just thinking about He awesome didn't have kids stuff. before he got... Did he? He never had children. I don't think no. so. I know he had the wife for a while. He, he had, had a never, couple of wives. <laughs> I don't think yeah, they they had children, okay, I'm not I, sure. I can't remember. But how much of that, yeah. how much of his disability made him who he is, the great mind that he is? So, That's a good point. Yeah. And I know it's one in a billion, literally one in a billion, but... Yeah, but he was already a great mind before he started, I mean, before he started getting... So most of his big contribution happened before the disability? No, no, I'm just saying he had all, he was yeah. already developing his great mind. He'd already right. been recognized for having a great mind. And then it was, remember, because it was a tragedy that he had gotten sick and people thought it was, yeah. you know, but he persevered. But if you evaluated and him continued. and said, what And came up with the contribute? wrong unified theory of everything, the debunked unified theory of everything. Well, that's what he came up with. Wasn't that him? Who are you Stephen, Stephen Hawking. Hawking. What well, was his big theory that got debunked? Uh, by the, the Higgs boson? By what? I don't know. I don't he, think his, it's gotten debunked. Oh, yes! Well, that's not, a, in, a, not in a shameful it's way, but it was... Wanna, no, I heard Ben Carson I say that. time on that. <laughs> Go ahead, read <laughs> the <laughs> I'll no, look it no, up no, just no, as a no, side no, note no, after the camera goes sure. on. Sure. has a point, please. Uh, the, the modern uh, social Darwinists might be uh, described as the people who advocate uh, books like The Secret and The Law of Attraction, where if you just think the right things, you're going to be rewarded. If you don't think I the don't right think things, so. I don't think so. But they're punished. thinking about how you're thinking, your positive thinking. But but don't you see that that while it's not genetics, it's still that that approach to to sort of a uh, social engineering or a, oh, a reward punishment, is that naturally you're going to be rewarded if you have 
if you do X or if you think X naturally, I you're poor you because you think Y. I see mm -hmm. what you mean. And I'm not mm -hmm. saying it's the same it's as thinking, what though. the eugenics, the, the genetic argument, but now that that's been discarded, you know, maybe Jim, you're going to cover this anyway. Is what what shows up in our in our current culture as far as this this idea that there's punishment uh, that's just that everybody gets their just rewards, either through poverty or through yeah. through riches. Um, that the entrepreneur who happens to be successful thinks that he has some kind of special touch. Yeah. When really, in the in the, um, the East, it's the same thing with the karma. Mm. Yeah, this is like a modern day karma where really he's just at the right place at the right time. I, I would point to Steve Jobs as someone like that who yeah. they now they worship as someone that's that somehow yeah. had this magic yeah. when actually not only was he an awful manager, he had a series of failures as well and um, he was just at the right place at the right time and then head of a company who at one point was on the verge of bankruptcy. Yeah. So to say that he had some kind of magic, uh-uh. We don't we, we discard the, the idea that there's luck involved with this, just like with the genetics genesis discarded the idea that there was luck and circumstance. It's funny because my father was a fairly successful businessman and he always said that there was a strong element of luck. Yeah, that's that I was just gonna bring that, that up. Just, yeah. <laughs> all effort. Time, place, yeah. circumstance, yeah. Yeah. a lot of luck. Well, wasn't it Warren Buffett who said that it is a matter of luck? And the harder I work, the luckier I get. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, you can, yeah, luck only goes so yeah. far. Yes, but, but, the know, work. but there's plenty of people that work people very work hard very and hard. do everything right when and, and just come up against yeah. bad luck, yeah. bad yeah. circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Another thing that you that uh, we could dwell on, a step off from, from your lecture tonight, is how many people in the United States of America in that period of time and still today subscribe to it, uh, the eugenics movement, uh, they were so sold and how they just, I mean, it was like a religion. They fervently believed in it, the control of a society through sterilization. Yeah. Um, just stop the breeders from breeding. The Nazi uh, party was able to identify uh, the genet genetics department of the Nazi party was able to estimate that one-fourth of the population of Germany, Germans, were unfit. And they started to identify people, of course this is a, you know, this is a political thing too, and they isolated those people and began to sterilize them. Mm -hmm. They had a huge sterilization program there. And who went there? Several people from our scientists from the United States yes, yes. and uh, studied there and observed the program. You mentioned it mm -hmm. in your paper, and there's more. <laughs> there's many, many more. Yeah, I that. know you ex extended yeah. that. Yeah, well, and uh, it's it's a horrible idea. I mean, how they could just and they the fact that they did that and that sterilization program in Indiana and. Of many states did have that. Michigan. It's quite a Michigan horrible. had it. Michigan had it. Yeah, of the retarded. Yeah. Um, how did this show up in politics, this idea of social Darwinism? Would you say that uh, a president like Herbert Hoover was a social Darwinist? Was there other... Roosevelt was. Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt earlier. Earlier, earlier. Yeah. Was, yeah, very yeah. conservative, unlike his, his uh, relative, mm -hmm. uh, FDR. Um, so I'm just wondering where else did it show up? I mean, when you when you uh, think about the Social Security program and how much that was resisted initially, very was that because there were there was the social Darwinists in the way that I think saying, that these ideas were floating around. But let's face yeah. it, the rich never want the poorer people to have any breaks, you know. Well, I think you also had a much different cultural setting at the time where people. Yeah. I mean, there was no. I mean, there was centuries and centuries of no such thing as a social net or no such thing yeah. as, so, you know, yeah. all that, the, the concept was so new, that's why it was so revolutionary, yeah. Marx and everything was so revolutionary, yeah. because, so I think you also have to put it in the con context of the time, and that was pretty, you know, having the thought of a social social network, forget eugenics, was yeah. kind of re pretty revolutionary, so of course people were yeah. going to be against it, that would not have been the conservative 
standpoint to take. The Christian should... thing probably would be too that you had you had gotten you know what you had deserved. You never. We were very influenced by the uh, Calvinists here. Yeah. And and you know and the the whole right. Protestant idea of. Uh, you know, work hard, the thrift, you know, you're elect, and that's the only way you could tell because nobody knew how, who was, you remember you were predestined for heaven or hell. Yeah. And, you know, how could you tell? Yeah, and today it's the left behind. Yeah, people, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, exactly. It's the yeah. same damn thing. Well, not the same damn thing, but, you know, but, you know, I remember when we studied that in, in college, the kids couldn't get their minds around that. We were going, well, if it was predestined, why couldn't you just go out and, you know, smoke and drink? I ask you know? that all the time. I know, but see, it doesn't make any sense because you like to have the respect and regard of those. And you also want your own sense of salvation. So how are you going to get that? But by being, like, uptight, making money. But, but they always make the argument that, on one hand, the reason for a God, the reason for religion is to keep all of us in line mm -hmm. morally, but at the same time, in that particular perspective, if everything's pre so they've already selected who they wanted. Yeah, but how then are you going to show you There should, there should be no moral motivation to believe. How are you going to show it? Yeah, because you don't. No, know. he's already figured it out according yeah, to Yeah, I know, but how yeah, are you going to show that, you, that you're one of the elect? Wait, you, you said you have to show it. Well, God's you figured want it out. To, but you no, want to. But you, no, God wants you to. He, he doesn't want you okay, to. Okay, but what I'm saying is, once you tell somebody, it doesn't matter. God has already it made his work decision. That way. It you didn't work that Where did you, where's your moral framework? It didn't work like that. The United States ran on that. I know it didn't, know, but that doesn't make like, sense. You're sitting, you're over hundred, hundred, some, yeah. More than 100 it, years. It's it not for you to think about what God thinks about. I, it, it's for you to just be a good person. I'm just saying, yeah. my, my husband explains that all the time because that's yeah. a religion he was in, and yeah. I don't understand it. I know the kids at school never understood it, but it makes perfect sense to me. Go ahead, Norm. The, the, the counter to the social Darwinist point of view is really the group selection, and that has now become ascendant, is that the idea that groups cooperating together ultimately prevail over uh, the conflict of, of individuals trying to uh, establish power for themselves, that that an individual or a set of individuals might win in the short term, but in the long term, it's the group, and not even the kin, but the group, the E.O. Wilson would say it would be the group, the group yeah. that mm -hmm. predominates, and you can't really do that in a social Darwinist perspective. In other no. words, the more people in your group that are cooperating, yeah. the better. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you can if you substitute individ group for individual. If you substitute and say, well, the group is the survival the, the, of the yeah. fittest, then you can. But if my group is larger than your group, who's going to win? If my group's smarter, larger, and whatever, then I'm going to win. My group's Yeah, I think, win. yeah, you know, smarter and efficient, all of those come into play. But um, I think what, what the message, at least for me, for the, the group selection is, is that if I can bring somebody up with me, that's, that's going to make us... A, 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 a stronger group right. than if I'm going to just push them away and say, I don't want you in my group. Well, you so, know, it, it depends on each person, though, kind of. But no, what you're saying is that's a whole study. I mean, that there's been a lot of studies. Yeah, yeah. and that, that is now the, uh, a very strong, it's not the only theory. theory. They're looking, in They're theory, still, in the less than scientific sense. They're still testing and thinking about it, and to putting it out there as a hypothesis, that's a better word. Hypothesis. Hypothesis. Yeah, kid selection. Isn't there a hole in that, in that, I guess, and I, you haven't really said this, but everyone's kind Burton of working for each that. other, but okay. when someone is tremendously brilliant, does that allow them to shine and be no. above all the rest of the group? No, they have to be no. charismatic, but they can be dumb as rocks. George they, there's Bush. no motivation Don't for Trump. them to... No motivation oh, yeah, for them to achieve Trump. big. If they feel, and, and again, I don't, I don't know any brilliant well, physicist, if he feels his, go, his purpose in life is to get those potatoes out of the ground for the group, then that brilliance isn't going to shine. Well, so, you know, I think well, you have to have a balance where, yeah, you, where, where people have, you know, have a chance to like shine if they're individualistic or do a group thing, and really, in the Western societies, we kind of have that. Yeah, we have team sports and we yeah. have track. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was thinking of the Asian societies that, that do focus much more on group cooperation mm. as yeah. part of their culture. They have problems in their societies. Too. Well, the, so there are other problems, like yeah. creativity. How do you, yeah. how do you foster uh, yeah. individual uh, But they don't have Trump. 
and, and creativity. Oh, God. Oh, God. And they got Miles Sloan. Um, if he, if yeah. he becomes president, but, I think I'm, like, checking out for the next eight years, you know, like, going to sleep or something. I didn't mean to just derail. <laughs> I shouldn't say those names. You know, I mean, in favor of immigration, if you look at what what immigrants historically have done for us in terms of their high level of achievement, people who came from Europe, came from war-torn areas, and then went on to found businesses here, and, and scientists and artists yes. and whatever, mm -hmm. you have to say, wow, you know, we've, we've benefited in so many ways. So, so to me, that is a, is a group that fostered this common idea, which, which in some ways was just freedom, was just freedom to, to express. But yeah. nevertheless, that's still a group idea, right? That was something that the group was going to protect. But there is individualists, you know, that don't do well in a group. And, I mean, yeah. it's good that we have the freedom in the Western societies to let them express themselves. So you can kind of like go off on your own, which is harder, or you can be part of a group. Or you can do varying degrees of both. Of both, be yeah. Be brilliant in the group. <laughs> Why yeah. not? So I'm going to say an honest statement. <laughs> if I lived during this time period, I probably would have bought hook, line, hook, line, and sinker into eugenics. Well, you'd be surprised. We all hook, line, and sinker into a lot of things that we should because there's a mass hysteria. Well, I don't even know about the mass hysteria. I think there's there's a real allure to the concept because it seems like an easy solution. It's simplistic. It's just, yeah, it's a simple. Well, what, what's, it's the simplistic. what's the problem? It's, yeah, like, it's yeah. like not letting the refugees in. Right. Because, like, one guy might slip through. I mean, Well, I'll give you an sure. example. I still, to this day, and, and I don't talk about it very often because it's a completely unpopular position, but I have a very hard time with the fact that anybody can procreate. We allow anybody to have children, <laughs> yet, you know, you have to have a driver's license to drive. I, I still have a huge problem with that because there's, I mean, and I'm not talking about the children themselves being the problem. Yeah. I'm talking about the parents, the parents yeah. causing the problems to the children, you know, destroying their potential for future, you know, uh, child abuse. I'm talking about all of the, yeah. you know, they can get pregnant while they're completely going to genetically screw this kid up with fetal alcohol syndrome and everything. Yeah. I have a huge problem with that. I, if someone could, could figure out a way to do that, and I know... License it. To, to make that somehow limit those... If you do anything like that, it's going to get of course. so fucked up. Of course, but, and of course <laughs> it would, and that's what happened with eugenics, yeah. and of course it was based on flawed yeah. science, and even though we have better science yeah. now, and we could make a better, we could make a perfectly scientific argument for doing it, of course it's flawed, yeah. Yeah. But, I'm, I'm, but you asked me why, and okay. I'm telling you, because it's an... You, no matter what you see, you see all the problems, and back then, without even the better science and with everything going on, I, I could see, you know, anarchism? No, I'm not going to buy into that. A lot of the stuff I wouldn't buy. But I could see yeah. myself have bought it, buying into this if I lived in that time period. I, I'm not going to lie. That, well, that I'm not going to hold myself as so, so no, no, a lot superior of, yeah. that I would. Oh, well, we didn't. A lot of people did. <laughs> yeah, but then that person does not ask the question, how much human potential am I destroying? And I might have asked the question, I might have, I'm not saying I would have bought into a hook, line, and sinker and become a member of the eugenics society, mm -hmm. I'm just saying that I probably would have been, yeah. I, I probably would have gone to some lectures, well, I would have given it some thought, I would have When I first heard about it, it, I saw the mathematical, again, you, know, yeah. you say, gee, mm -hmm. you know, mathematically speaking, you're just cutting off that yeah. three sigma edge of the Gaussian curve, and saying you're bringing the average You know up. what's wrong with but this? You, but as you go on, and you see the horrendous nature. See, we don't really know executing. exactly either. You know, there's that sociological theory, and I can't remember everybody that embraces it, but I do, where there's, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't try to do, you know, like good societal things, but there's unintended Con bad consequences. Right. And right. that's why, yeah. like the Clinton administration, why they tried to do things in small, right. experimental small things, because, yeah, they did. Most of the things yeah. that they did were small, because they, the unintended consequences, and you see that now with population control, that a lot of these countries like Italy and, and I think, who else, I can't remember, oh, China, China obviously, yeah. they're having like too many old people that are surviving Japan. a long time. Yeah, and, and they don't have enough United young people. States. So here is an unintended consequence of something yeah. that I embraced, which was population control. Me too.
All right, there you I go. Agree. Now we've got and a problem. You see, that's why you should do like social experiments in small, small and self correct numbers. as you go. Yeah. Exactly. You don't set the policy and lock it in. Exactly. There's a great book set called The Logic the whole of whole country or a whole it's a yeah, great, great book called book. The Logic of Failure that oh, talks about that how we get into down. Dietrich Dorner is the author and and how we as humans we have limited capacity really. We don't we think we don't. <laughs> we do. And it'll go in and talk about how where Chernobyl went wrong. We think linearly or there's something invisible or we over control. Mm -hmm. And there'll just be a lot of examples in that book that you, and, you know, graphs and studies. But in the end, you look at systems and you say, yes, we're humans. And if you could, you know, maybe a hundred things can go wrong. And if you're a genius, you'll get 50. So. You said it was the logic of failure? So, yeah, the logic of failure. That's so interesting. Put, a, you know, put it into place. And I guess yeah. the big lesson is watch how it happens because exactly. there's unintended stuff. And you're yeah. And I mean, it's, it's amazing. You cannot think oh, yeah, of everything right on top of the that's big going effort. to happen. That's bad. Well, and one of this very good policy that you're putting into place. And one of the things that we that came up, and, and you talked about um, Nazi Germany ending, you know, bringing people to their senses. I got to ask myself, what would have happened with eugenics if, if there had hadn't won? been a Nazi mm. Germany? How how far would they have taken that experiment or that that, that social? If if Germany hadn't stepped in and proven how horrible. disastrous yeah. that, or you know how well, hideous. I think we would have at some point woken up on at our some own. point. But you got to wonder how we would have. How much would have what our trajectory would have been? Taken longer. Mm -hmm. What would be our and, and what would have happened? Our arc of descent. Oh, I have exactly. another contribution to the uh, the intelligence and passing it along. In the in the research that was done in throughout over that long period of time. Uh, it was discovered, and Mary will recognize this right away, the ten tendency to regress to the mean. Yes. In, 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 geneti in genetics, in passing things along. The genius, the, 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 the family, that the, the parents are, are just yeah, I think I've got a very brilliant yes. and ready to go. It's, they regress And then to the, the children, the uh, a little bit yeah. less, and some, well, some, one will be more, yeah. uh, one will be a great deal more, but the tendency is a regression toward the mean. So the eugenics... Yeah, regression toward the mean, right? It's right. right. No, 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 I, I get what he's talking about. No you matter can, what can, we would have done, eventually we would have gotten back to... Yeah. Well, no, no, yeah. he means... No matter what the eugenics would have done, uh, in intelligence, but I'm just we're just working with intelligence. But that's the, the studies I, I'm remembering, is that they finally realized that there's a regression toward the mean. Mm -hmm. You have uh, brilliant musicians and, and fantastic artists and so forth. Where are all the Picassos? Right. He had children all over the place. Where are they? Yeah. Paloma yeah. is the only one I know of, and she's a she was a yeah. you know a jewelry designer. Yeah, she's jewelry still alive. Designer. She's very yeah. old. Very nice jewelry, but yeah. you know, not so, the Picasso level. Huh? Yeah, no, no. Yeah. no. Oh, Reese's, she designs for Tis Tiffany. Sure, exactly. Yeah. What Reese is expressing in in that perspective that you you disowned, but you said that that's what you would be tempted to is the left is is from the left. That is that the government can socially engineer for the for right. the betterment of mankind. Right. This this. Utopia yeah. that somehow, mm -hmm. if we had the power, yeah. we could do to the people for their own good yeah. what we need to do. Mm -hmm. And I reject that as a libertarian. I say, I, I want the smaller mm -hmm. government. I don't want the government to plan my economics and my society, my culture, because one, un, un, unintended consequences, and two, ultimately, it's going to step on my freedom. It's going to ultimately, I'm going to have to. Uh, be, it's going to be a conflict with me as an individual. Yeah. So it's not the Republicans. What I want to say, it's not the Republicans that are going to say, oh, we want to sterilize people. Yeah. The Republicans might say, we're not it's going to spend a dime yeah. on yeah. the poor. Yeah, we'll let them starve yeah. we'll again. Them well, that's what they'll do. Right. Yeah. Oh, it's, it, uh, Durham, it's Durham's really interesting probably. that when these programs were being talked about and sponsored and so forth, a great deal of the money was coming from the Rockefellers, the Carganese. Mm -hmm. The people who had the money. Yes, the yeah. billionaires. Okay, yeah. well that's why I asked about whether the, the politicians were on board with it as well, with, whether, you know... Yes, there were many were. politicians on board because that's where the, the eugenists came into the government and started to influence, you know, the uh, representatives and the senators over to their side 
and that's why we got the, the government to sponsor that. But they got the, the government. Was it, was it the Republicans, or was it just anybody? Well, who would... cer well whoever it was was uh, certainly had a lot of money. Because this, this idea, well, we're going to do good for you. Yeah. We, the government, we're the government. Yeah. We're here to help, or we're the government. We know best. So you just listen to us, and you know. Uh, it, it happens with conservative I think it would governments. Be the Republicans, the, because starting with the Theodore Roosevelt. The Johnson, the War on Poverty, oh, is another example of that where mm -hmm. billions were spent. I don't think it was a good investment. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it was well intended. Um, Dugan, uh, you know, tearing down well, all the, the houses. Well. Yeah. Oh, that, in, yeah. In Detroit, he's spending sixteen thousand dollars to tear down every house, so that there's a, a vacant lot there mm -hmm. <laughs> instead of a, of a. I guess sure. you know, you could argue it that that's better mm -hmm. than having a dilapidated. You're, you're a, you're, are you computers? Yeah. Okay, so okay. I have a question.